we cannot possibly hold him responsible for the crimes he committed. He feels bad, you guys. He feels bad. There is a new TV sensation, and it's called The Apprentice. That's what I'm calling it, is Donald Trump's new apprentice, okay? It's not exactly a TV show yet, but what we've got is people running to the courtroom to be seen next to him so that he will choose them as his vice president. This is great. This is lots of fun. He's running a game show inside the courtroom right now. If you're watching, press the subscribe button, press the like button, press the thumbs up. Subscribing is scientifically proven to make me happier and it'll probably make you happier too. So you should do that. Tuberville. After attending Trump's trial, the most depressing thing I've ever been in, says Tuberville. Tuberville, a huge piece of shit from Alabama, um, emerged from the court proceedings Monday in former President Trump's hush money trial called the Manhattan courtroom the most depressing thing I've seen I've ever been in. What? Tommy. My man, Tommy. Was it, was it supposed to be fun? Was it supposed to be a great time? It's the most depressing. It's, it's a very dry and boring case about moving money into the wrong place illegally. Notice me, Senpei American Edition. Yeah, do, should they Their have... original family name was Tupperwareman, but they changed it on Ellis <laughs> Island. <laughs> That's very nice. Um, Tupperwareman, I like that. Uh, Tommy Tupperwareman. Should they have done jazz hands? Should they have danced a little bit? Could they have done a little salsa dance and made Tommy feel better? Uh, should they have stopped every hour or so for an ad break? Or perhaps a fun little skit where the uh, jury puts on a little show, sings a dance, sings a song, does a dance. Maybe, maybe they should have made it more exciting for Tommy. But it's the most depressing thing ever. Uh, for some reason, that's sad. Um, first of all, brought um, to you by Raid Shadow Legends. Brought to you by Raid Shadow Legends. You damn right. They could have done that. They could have had a. a a, a whole two minutes where they talk about Raid Shadow Legends and the latest hero. Um, and <laughs> that would have kept him awake. He would have waked up. He would have seen the, seen the titties on the, on the Raid Shadow Legends lady. Would have perked him up a little bit. He would have come, uh, he would have uh, uh, woke up a little bit, put a little endorphins in his brain, and he could have stayed awake. First of all, I'm disappointed in the courtroom. I'm hearing Mr. Trump, Mr. Trump. He's former President Trump. Give him some respect. I mean, that's what this place is in there. It is no respect. Here is what I'm seeing too. It's depressing. That courtroom is depressing. This is New York City, the icon of our country. And we got courtroom and we and we got a courtroom that is the most depressing thing I've ever been in. He wants a Broadway show. The man is from Alabama. He's been told that New York is the center of all art culture in the world. And it's just plain people in plain suits speaking quietly. He he hasn't seen a dancing anthropomorph anthropomorphized cat once in that fucking horror room. Okay, he has not seen a single Barbara of Seville inside there. He has not seen a single cat. There's not been any Lion King puppetry inside that courtroom, and it is depressing him. Okay, he needs to be entertained. <laughs> Uh, Tuberville took aim at Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Uh, Tuberville with J.D. Vance, huge piece of shit also, uh, said there was there as Trump's friend more so than political supporter. So who said this? Uh, was this Tuberville? Yeah. The Republican candidate for the President of the United States is going through mental anguish in a courtroom. And that's very depressing. Very depressing. I'm glad to stand here by President Trump. I'm a friend of his. I'm here more as a friend than backing him as a candidate as president. Mental anguish, you guys. Mother of God, call this shit off. Donald Trump is facing mental anguish. I've got some fungus anguish. gaps which can help Tommy see the courtroom singing and dancing more vividly. <laughs> that's that's uh, probably not legal in, in New York, but he should try it. It might change his life. Anyway, mental anguish, you guys. Donald Trump is facing mental anguish over this court trial. You should just cancel it, right? Stop the stop the press, stop the court. He's feeling bad. We cannot possibly hold him responsible for the crimes he committed. He feels bad, you guys. He feels bad.
He's feeling mental anguish. <sighs> we should just pack up the... We used to be a country. We're not anymore. Okay, so Toberville continues. This guy worked for President Trump. How can you be convinced by somebody that is a serial liar? I mean, it should be no reason. I mean, it should be no reason that anybody should listen to this guy. But at the end of the day, the Democrats, the Democrats are trying to beat President Trump in the jury box because they can't beat him in the ballot box. He's a serial liar because he's paid to be a serial liar. Tom, Tommy, he's, you in that sentence said he worked for Donald Trump. Why did he work for Donald Trump? Because he was a serial liar. Yes, Tommy. Donald Trump intentionally, willingly, knowingly hired serial a serial liar, liar a serial liar, on purpose so that he would lie for him. That's what his job was. If that you was worked for Trump, that's a requirement for Trump employment. Right. If you work for Donald Trump, you have to be a serial liar. And now he's saying we can't trust him because he's a serial liar. Donald Trump, serial liar, surrounded by serial liars, hires only serial liars. And when he gets in trouble, you can't listen to those people as they testify in a courtroom. They're all serial liars. You can't believe anything they say. Vote for Trump. <laughs> More delusional. Uh, oh, poor Trump, he's facing consequences of the actions. Yeah, he's, he's bent, uh, anguish, anguish. Uh, Tommy Tuberville is, uh, he's on the Apprentice TV show now. That's what this is. This is the new Apprentice. Tommy Tuberville is there in the courtroom saying the things so that he can become the vice president. Same for J.D. Vance. J.D. Vance was there as well today. Huge piece of shit. J.D. Vance, terrible person. I want him as far away from government as possible. He's probably the least good faith person that's, that's in Washington right now. He really is. None of the things he says he believes, he doesn't matter. He doesn't, he doesn't give a shit about anything. He has no principles, no ethics. I, I say that about most Republicans, but he's a special case. He's especially empty of principles and ethics. Making up sympathy sound bites for the cult. <laughs> uh, he was paid to lie, obfuscate, and now that he's uh, flipped his former crime organization, regards him as rat. Yes, exactly. That was his job to do those things. So we've got two people uh, auditioning for The Apprentice. We've got uh, Tuberville and we've got J.D. Vance. Then, who else have we got? Uh, Trump's allies, potential VB contenders, flock to Manhattan Courthouse. Uh, Vivek Ramaswamy is expected to join Trump on Tuesday. Vivek the Snake, Vivek the Fake, sorry, I got the name wrong, Vivek the Fake, is going to be there on tomorrow auditioning for The Apprentice. That's what this is. He's going to go there. He's going to say the nice things. And uh, let's see. On Tuesday, Trump's uh, former Republican challenger is now a staunch supporter. Vivek Ramaswamy is expected to attend court with him, according to his spokesperson. His appearance follows attendance by J.D. Vance, Tommy Tuberville, Nicole Malatakis, Malatakis, and Steve Marshall of Alabama, and Brenna Bird of Iowa. They're just showing up. Donald Trump real liar requirement is gonna land him the most wild card VP pick of all time, Hillary Clinton. It's the twist that will keep this season interesting. Right, that's the twist that'll keep the season interesting. You're right, uh, as soon as you're right. This is uh, this is mob boss uh, behavior. Okay, so now gag order. Here's the scam. Uh, okay, let's read what Vance said before we move on. Uh, on Monday, Vance, who has been seen as a contender to be Trump's vice president, attempted to discredit Michael Cohen. Uh, this guy is a convicted felon. Does any reasonable person believe anything that Michael Cohen says? The thing that the president is prevented from saying, which is a disgrace, is that every single person involved in this prosecution is practically a Democrat political operative. The thing that the president is prevented from saying. So, Stormy Daniels gag order usual refers to something else. <laughs> you have, you got to pay extra for that, Popak. Um, prevented from saying, Donald Trump is not allowed to attack the jury and the people that are witnesses. He's not allowed to do that by law. So he's having J.D. Vance do it for him. He's having Tuber Tuberville do it for him. He's having Fox News do it for him. Here we go. Did Trump direct Janine Pirro to violate the gag order for him? This this is the thing that Republicans hate. They tell me, they come into my chat, they come onto my comment section and tell me that the, the MSDNC controls the news. And here is literally Donald fucking Trump controlling the news. At the end of the testimony today, this is a couple days old, criminal defendant Donald Trump summoned Fox News' Janine Pirro over to speak with him privately as he was leaving the courtroom. That was reported by uh, New York Times. Uh, Trump looks delighted as he stands up at the end of the proceedings. He sees Janine Pirro as he leaves and he whispers, come. <laughs> giggity. Now, she does. 
<laughs> because she, she's a good girl who does what she's told. Uh, several hours later, Chum directed his followers on Truth Social to tune in to specifically watch the Imperial on Shan ha Sean Hannity's show. He didn't promote any other show to watch that night. He didn't promote any other guests on Hannity's show. He specifically directed people to watch only Piro on Hannity tonight. Watch Judge Jeanine tonight on Sean Hannity. Because he told her what to say, then she said it. This is the thing that the Republicans yell about. This is the thing that they hate. They hate the politicians working with the, the news to give you a narrative. They tell me that the Dems do it. I've seen no evidence of it. Yet here it is, them doing the thing they hate, or they say they hate. They don't hate it. They hate it when somebody else does it, or does it to uh, uh, in a way that they disagree with. They, they love it. They love politicians telling the news what to say. If it's a conservative idea, if it's a Republican thing, then they're on board. Absolutely. I think we can watch it. Um, when Pirro went on Hannity two hours after Trump's post, she spent the entire interview making comments that would violate the gag order if Trump or one of his attorneys or one of his official representatives had said them. So they're doing, or going around the gag order for him. Here she viciously and disgustingly attacks Stormy Daniels, exactly how Trump would do almost word for word. Uh, let's listen to her and see if it sounds Trumpian. He had some kind of account that she alleges she had some kind of encounter with him in 2006 and a decade later 2017 he's paying uh, uh, for her to stay silent is absurd no. and the whole idea that we this woman who is capable of even telling the truth is stunning given who she is and what she does for a living she hates she, she's <sighs> Janine you and her are both whores she's just honest about it Donald Trump. She makes fun of him. She sold merchandise. She's made a million dollars, well over a million dollars since her alleged encounter with Donald Trump. And That's so how hush money yourself. works, what dumb ghoul. 800000 for the book, 130 for the non-disclosure, another 120 for some other tour. Then there's a Make America Horny tour. Then there's Saint, Saint, whatever her name is, uh, uh, Stormy in like some religious robe. This woman is exactly what you know she is. But <laughs> uh, you know, I think the same thing about you, Janine. You are exactly what I think you are. So he's telling her what to say. He's telling her what to do. He controls the people there. They are not journalists. They are his mouthpiece. They are his followers. They say the things he tells them to say. And it's going to keep going. J.D. Vance is doing it now. Vivek Ramaswamy is going to do it tomorrow. And I'll have some photos of him doing that on Wednesday. On Wednesday's stream. I'll be back on Twitch and we can all go over there. And we'll watch Vivek do the exact same thing. I'm already calling it now. Today's Monday. He's going to be there on Tuesday. Uh, we'll get the, the uh, sound bites and all that fun stuff Tuesday night. Wednesday, I'll bring it up. And we'll watch him go around that gag order for Donald Trump. 